So I had an experience recently where I consumed around a kilo of sugar in around three days, which is an insane amount of white sugar. And I wanna make this video to make you very aware of why you should completely avoid white sugar completely. And I had not consumed any white sugar for around like 60 to 70 days prior to actually going on this crazy binge with very sugar rich containing processed vegan foods. So I decided to go to Singapore and Singapore seems to be the land of abundance in Asia that has so many junk foods that are suitable for vegans that's not available in Thailand. So I thought, why not indulge? It's absolutely fine. I'm not gonna beat myself up if I just wanna go crazy with some foods that are not the best for me. I do a lot of fasting and just get my body to eliminate and process all the garbage that I've had. And I know that, yes, it will give me some negative effects, but they won't last very long because of the fasting and various other things that I do, such as abstaining from these foods after consuming them for a short period of time. So you may be thinking, where did I get the white sugar from? Well, I was consuming around two pots of vegan Ben and Jerry's a day and then other foods along side that. And I didn't actually know how much I was consuming at the time, but then I worked it out by looking on chronomy and input in the foods that I consumed. It was like, whoa, I've consumed pretty much a whole bag of white sugar. And obviously white sugar is a highly refined processed food. And what is a very negative thing that it induces within the body, it gets your dopamine to be produced in such excessive amounts that your body's like, whoa, this is way too much dopamine. So it needs to down-regulate the amount of dopamine your body's producing. So how does it do that? It down-regulates your dopamine receptors. And the less dopamine receptors you have, the less dopamine your body can produce. And dopamine is a neurotransmitter. And it's like what I would call the reward system instant gratification neurotransmitter because dopamine is produced when you reach a goal or you consume like white sugar or certain other foods or you watch porn or have sex and there's just a list of things that just goes on and on and on and certain things are natural good things to get your body produce a healthy amount of dopamine and then there's ones that just produce excessive amounts one of the worst things to produce an abundance of dopamine within the body where it down regulates it so much is white sugar. So what it does is spikes dopamine really high and what goes up must come down. So I wanted to make you aware of the negative effects that is induced in me. It's completely destroyed my dopamine production. It has made my body down regulate the dopamine receptors. Then my body's not producing as much dopamine and my dopamine levels feel so low. What I can compare it to is certain substances that people take, certain recreational ones, that can release loads of dopamine, which I have experience with from taking those things many, many years ago. It's very similar to those, where you just feel absolutely awful and you have this come down effect and it's just, your dopamine levels are so, so low. And then you could be seeking certain things to get your body to produce dopamine in unhealthy ways. And it can become this very vicious cycle. So this is why people get hooked on white sugar. Because you get this high, you go down, and then it makes you wanna come back to whatever you have been doing to get your body to produce a lot of dopamine. So for example, food manufacturers such as Ben & Jerry's create foods in a way to make it very addictive. Gives you loads of dopamine, it tastes very amazing. It's very stimulating for your taste buds and your mind and your body. And then you'll feel really good afterwards like I did. I felt like I had loads of energy afterwards. I was like, wow, I feel really amazing. I knew why it was happening specifically. And obviously my body's getting a lot of glucose which can fuel my mind and body as well. But then I found the next day that my energy levels were not as good. I wasn't feeling as good and then I was desiring it more. So then I wouldn't feel so good. And then I thought, yeah, I'll just have some more while I'm here while I'm on this holiday and indulging. And then I feel good again. And yeah, it just becomes this very, very vicious cycle. But I knew just for around three days I consumed these foods and then I would just go on my merry way and just avoid them. So yeah, I've been back in Thailand for a few days now. And yeah, I've just been riding that wave of feeling like no dopamine production pretty much or whatsoever and having this lull low. And it's, 
yeah, it's not good at all, but I'm glad that I went through it because it wouldn't get me to make this video content that I'm making now that can make other people aware around this. And so many people are doing things that are really messing up doping production. When it's low, it makes you apathetic. It destroys your sex drive. It makes your cognitive functions not optimal. It makes your mood all over the place. You can get easily angry at things and irritable. It increases cortisol production, adrenaline production, and it just has a whole host of negative effects. If you don't know much about dopamine, do your research up online and you can find out all the different symptoms that dopamine production, well, low amounts of dopamine production can induce to you in high amounts, like optimal, healthy amounts of dopamine. Because so many people are suffering with low dopamine levels, one of the main things is due to white sugar. So yeah, I've just been riding this wave out and as there's anything that makes you go up and come down and you have all these negative effects, you just gotta wait for your body to get to a point where it reaches what is known as homeostasis where it just starts to make everything function as optimally as possible. So yeah, just riding it out, and then what starts to happen after a few days or so, dopamine production starts to naturally climb up and up and up and up, without me just like spiking it through the roof of white sugar, because I have so much self-discipline and control where I'm just like, okay, I knew I was gonna consume those foods, and then afterwards, I just abstain from them. And I just have to ride out this low, and fasting helps me recover way, way, faster. So yeah, basically what it's done to me is make me a lesser version of myself. It's far from making me the best version of myself. And it's just a real struggle to just get on with life and do things due to me being so apathetic and low in energy. And also at the same time, what is the white sugar doing as well? It lowers your testosterone. So you really want to be avoiding white sugar as much as you possibly can. I'm not saying you need to completely not to consume it whatsoever. But most people are consuming processed foods and pretty much every processed food has white sugar in. So a lot of time, people that eat standard three meals a day are normally getting lots of sugar three meals a day. And people are not normally aware of how much sugar they're actually consuming. And even if you go to McDonald's, like the sauce put on a salad is just full of so much sugar. So a lot of time people think they're eating certain healthy foods when if you actually look at the ingredients list, you will see that sugar is in an abundance in a lot of things that you're consuming that you didn't even realize. And it doesn't just have a negative effect on dopamine production, testosterone production, but they are the main ones that I've noticed that it has for me. So yeah, you just need to be as mindful as you can possibly around this. And I recommend that if you haven't gone a long period without consuming white sugar, that you go 30 days without consuming white sugar. Because I can guarantee anyone that stops consuming it, you're gonna to start to notice that your mental health, your physical health, your energy levels, your hormone production, your digestion, and many other things are just gonna go through the roof. And yes, it can be a little bit hard to abstain from them because as you're low in the dopamine, your body wants to seek out certain things to get more dopamine. So it may seek more of the foods that you're trying to avoid that have messed up your dopamine production. And that's been happening for me. But for me, it's just easy to say no because I don't wanna be in this vicious cycle where I'm just going back and forth and being like a drug addict and it's just not a recipe for making me the best version of myself and giving me the best health and other things that I want. But yeah, like I said, so I know some people are gonna say, well, you shouldn't have done this, this is not good to make yourself suffer like this, and it's just like, it's not the end of the world. I just need to wait out a little bit, my body will recover fully, and it's a great little experiment for me, and I'm great, for that it actually happened. Because I know that white sugar has these negative effects, but the difference between knowing something and experiencing it is very interesting. And I used to be someone that used to consume liters of Coca-Cola and candy and other various things. And no wonder why I used to be all over the show and I ended up with so many different health issues and I was just such an angry, irritable person and just not a nice person whatsoever. So it can really give you an insight when you've avoided something for a while and go back to it, how it sort of changed you into a specific type of person. I've done that many times on my journey. I've abstained from something for a very long period of time and then gone back to it and tried it for a little bit at certain times. And notice how it just starts to change my perception on the world and my thought process and mood and just so many other things that sometimes just makes you realize how much the things that you switch to has really helped you become a better person and got you more away from a version of yourself that really wasn't the best 
version of yourself. But yeah, we live in a world where most people don't have self-control and self-discipline and also the education on what I'm talking about on this video. Maybe you didn't until you're watching this video now. And a lot of people would just be in this vicious cycle for the rest of their life and they're not necessarily aware of it. A lot of people are just doing it unconsciously with consuming so many white sugar products and they're fucking up their health and just their whole human experience in so many different negative ways. But yeah, you don't necessarily need to be one of them, neither do I. You can make the conscious choice by becoming aware of this through this video and you could research up so much more information and other video content online on this subject and really just start changing your life. So yeah, there's a lot of other bad things that can affect you in a negative way, and definitely in these processed foods, there was other things that was affecting me in a negative way, but the sugar was definitely the main contributing factor. And I used to be one of the biggest sugar addicts that you could have ever met in the past. So a good alternative for someone like myself or anyone else that's abstaining from white sugar, just go towards a naturally occurring form of sugar and that is within fruit. Fruit is not bad for you whatsoever as long as it's ripe fruit, high quality fruit done with correct food combining it will be really good for you. A lot of people especially in the keto world demonize fruit but fruit is not bad whatsoever. A lot of people put white sugar in the same category as fruit and that is just absolutely ridiculous. Fruit has fiber and minerals and vitamins and other various things that stop it from having a negative effect on your dopamine production and testosterone production. And certain different specific micronutrients get your body to produce an abundance of dopamine. And a lot of these nutrients are found naturally occurring within fruit and other food sources as well. So yeah, if you're someone that's trying to kick your sugar craving, you just have to go cold turkey. I think that's the best way to do it. Don't just have a little bit here and there and just minimize the amount you're having. Just eliminate it completely and start adding in certain foods such as fruit that have naturally occurring sugars within there that are not stripped of all of the beneficial nutrients and fiber and water and so on. And I'm telling you, it was a game changer for me when I started eliminating it completely and it will be for you as well if you embark on this journey. So join me on this journey. If you're already consuming white sugar, just stop now and let us know what benefits you get after doing it for a long period of time and the negative symptoms you get when avoiding it for a period of time. And what I've learned over the years is most people when they're avoiding white sugar and just other sugary refined products out there, it can give you some negative symptoms for around three to four, five or six or seven days. But once you get through that, you're out on the other side. So you don't have to have much self-control and self-discipline for a very long period of time. And once you're out the other side, it's easy to avoid it. As long as you're not someone that is just trying to live off of processed junk foods, if you're trying to live off of those foods mostly, then it's gonna be very hard for you to avoid white sugar. So you wanna be consuming as much whole natural foods as you possibly can, because they're then not gonna have any of these white sugary and other sugary refined products added within them. And my last thing I wanna mention is white sugar is just empty calories. And why so many people end up obese is because they're consuming processed foods with so many refined things in them, such as white sugar, which then is normally giving you an excessive amount of calories throughout the day for all the foods that you are consuming. And then due to being in a calorie surplus where you're consuming more calories than you're burning, you're then going to end up getting excess fat being gained on your body, which then leads to people getting morbidly obese. So yeah, when you're eating high calorie foods that are very low in micronutrients and very high in processed foods, it's very easily to overeat on calories. But if you switch from a diet containing foods such as that to a diet with a lot of whole foods in that are natural, like I do the majority of the time, you can easily eat way, way, way less calories and stay full for longer, satiated for longer, feel better, and get a whole host of other amazing benefits as well. And one good example to make myself is when I was consuming these processed foods, within about a two to three hour window, I could easily eat 4,000 calories of junk food. But if I'm eating whole foods, I can only eat around 1,500 calories, which is way, way less. So yeah, just start adding in more healthy foods into your diet, remove 
So many of the processed foods, hopefully all of them, yes, it can be okay to indulge in them here and there, but don't base the majority of your diet on them and don't eat excessive amounts so consistently. So that's it for me in this video. If you like the video, like it down below. Don't forget to share it with others. Leave your questions down below and don't forget to click that subscribe button down below to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. And don't forget, if you want to be notified of when the new videos are uploaded, you click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded and I have new ones coming almost every single day. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic and go get those gains. Peace.